Welcome to How to Cooking Today with Chef Jeff. I'm out at Whitetail Ridge at West Point Lake in Troop County, Georgia. Uh, stay tuned, the show is going to be nice. We're going to talk about fish, hush puppies off a of grill, corn, and coleslaw made different. Stay tuned. Welcome to Health of Cooking with Chef Jeff today. Today we are out at Whitetail Campground on the beautiful West Point Lake right out here. Um, and as you can see, I'm set up on the outside, which I'm excited to be on the outside. This is the second trip on the road with Healthy Cooking with Chef Jeff. And we are Facebook Live, streaming live. So welcome to all those Facebook fans of mine. And Let's get started on some outdoor food. And today I got a big flat black grill out here. It's nice and warm. Got my gloves on. And we're going to do some catfish off a of grill. Breaded catfish pan fried off a of grill. And we're going to make also an uh, slaw, which is going to have red and green cabbage. And we're also going to put a little apple in it right there. Um, mix with it and we're also going to take and make some hush puppy mix off a of grill also in which my days we call them whole cakes today we're going to call them hush, hush puppies and, and stuff and we're going to add all these ingredients here a little bit of corn pepper eggs and, and all that in it and onion in it now the fish itself it's going to be breaded with a panko breading and it also gonna have salt, pepper, and a lot of other spices in it too. All right, um, let's get started. The first thing I want to start with is the uh, coleslaw, cause that that right there can set and marinate while I do all the other things uh, and get it flavor. Okay, um, but the catfish I got, I got it here. This is a three to five ounce portion thin fillets of catfish those are the best ones to use because if you get a bigger piece let's say a seven to eight or nine ounce portion it takes a little longer to cook uh, but in it and it tends to be a little bit dry but these smaller ones smaller ones work best all right so let's get started on the uh, coleslaw And what I'm going to do is, get myself together here, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my cabbage, in which some of the people out there were nice enough to get me this, and it is super nice, and I'm going to change the blade on it to make shreds. This is a mandolin, a mandolin that... Uh, one of my good friends purchased from Amazon, put on the show for the day, Mr. Philip. Mr. Philip Sledge purchased this. This is his own. This is a nice product. Okay. And how does it work is all the product going to be caught down in there as I hold it and do like that with it. Okay. But me being me, supposed to be safe, but I'm hard headed. Please don't do this at home. You can you can adjust the thickness of it. And you can you can see, can you see how that came out like that? That's gonna be really good slaw. And I'm gonna do the apple the same way. See how that came out real shredded, real nice. Yeah, 
Let me take some green cabbage on this. You want to make sure you run the grade against it like that so people can see when you when you're running it, it doesn't fall apart on you. You see how it come out there like that? And this is fine shredded like you want slaw to be. Now, I'm going to put this guy to the side. Move some of this stuff out my way. I like to use my knife. I'm old fashioned. And you want to shred it with a knife like that and you go real thin you notice i got this finger real close to it that's guiding my knife to make it look like this and you can see how that came out how it looked take back to this thing here this is a good product um, for doing that product product there add this to it and now I'm going to shred up some apples add to it and I'll do the same thing with the onion now the apple right here get these guys off it and I'm gonna cut it in half and do the same thing with shredding. And I'm gonna take the core out. The best way to take the core out of the apple to me is like this. I hope you can see that, that overhead shot is like that. You can get an apple core and core out of apple, but to me, that this, that's the way I would like to do it and shredding up a little apple to go in there. And that apple is what it's gonna do. It's gonna give it that sweetness that you'd be looking for in a coleslaw, uh, especially since I got onion in it. Um, and you wanna mix all that together. Some people take sugar and add to it and vinegar and add to it, but that's a vinegar-based coleslaw. And this is a creamy-based coleslaw right here. All right. So that this apple is taking the substitution of that sugar. All right. And I only use a fourth of that apple in there because I'm only making a little bit of coleslaw. Can y'all, I hope the viewers out there can see this. I and mean, this is just a red and green coleslaw. You know, a lot of people like traditional coleslaw with just green. Now to cut an onion to go on here. This is just a regular onion, regular yellow onion. The best onion, I think, to, to me, to make coleslaw with is a Vidalian onion. Those are sweet and got good flavor to it. But this yellow onion right here is just as good because it'll have a little bit more bite to it. All right. And so, so many people peel onions so many different ways. And me, I just like to screw it and then peel it. Peel it off like so. And that way, you get more of your onion. And you see that part right there? I'm gonna take it out slightly. That's the core. And then I'm just gonna slice myself off it, just like I would for a hamburger. 
and I got this whole onion left intact. And then I'm gonna just take these slices, cut them in half, and dice it. An uh, onion will fall apart itself as you cut it. See the ridges like that come out? It falls apart. So if you want to get a small dice or julienne or something like that, that's a different cut. All right, and I'm just going to non-traditional chop it like so. And you may notice, see how the onion fell apart and came together like that? About the same size as the slaw. And that's what you want. You want your product to be about the same size. And I'm not going to put that much of it in there. All right. I don't know about y'all. I like a little bit of salt. And what this salt going to do is going to bring out the moisture out of the cabbage. And now what I'm going to do is take a mixture, a coleslaw mixture, a uh, craft product. You can make your own with uh, mayonnaise, salt, pepper, and um, vinegar, all that. But since I'm outside and you're outside and you want to do something different, if you had a picnic or a cookout or anything like that, you can take this product here. It's a shortcut, but it works well. All right, a little bit of this. And that's the beauty of it. You can make this to your liking. And you can add other things to it, if you like, like nuts. If you like nuts in there, almonds or whatever, raisin. But me, I like a little bit of appetite apple flavor to it and that's our coleslaw for right now I'm gonna set this guy back to the back back over here okay now what I'm going to do now is cut these I'm gonna change the blade on this product here and then, all right we're gonna take these and do them like that Let me do it the right way, because I got viewers, me being mean, um, quick. We're going to take it and do it like that. Need to get it started. Next time I just take a knife and... And you see how these guys came out. And we're going to take some mushrooms and we're going to add to it. And a little bit of onion. And all these onions, add these guys to it. This is going to be almost like a little bit of potato hash off the grill there for that for that uh, catfish. And these are baby portobello's mushrooms, and that's why they look so dark and all that kind of stuff. And portobello's are kind of sweet like for a mushroom. All right. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take a little bit of margarine, salt, a little bit of pepper. And you may notice I'm doing all that in this one dish right here since I sliced it. That way, I'm not using one, two, three, four bowls just to do one product. All right. And you can always mix stuff in with one thing there, okay? And if you can use one thing to do multiple things, 
There's less you gotta clean up. And I'm putting a little margin in there. And I'm gonna come back to that. All right, I'm gonna set it off to the side here. Cause that won't take long. That's gonna be like a potato hash, like I mentioned. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm gonna start on is the hush puppy mix. The hush puppy mix is gonna consist of some of these peppers, egg, a little bit of milk I got here. You can use buttermilk, whole milk, or whatever type of milk that you want to use there. And this is the uh, this is the uh, hush puppy mix. This is just a mix. Uh, normally, I take flour, cornmeal, eggs, salt, pepper, all those products there to make a hush puppy mix. All right, but we do it this on the grill. Okay. That's about two cups. And I'm going to take my onion. Again, this is that same onion. I'm just slicing it off. And I'm going to dice it up and put it in there. Then I'm going to take some of that red bell pepper and yellow bell pepper. Put in here. Okay, some corn. And this corn here, all I'm gonna do is just shave it off the edge of it and put it in there. But the other corn I'm gonna toss on the grill All right, and I took the corn off that and pushed it off to the side, okay, and I hope our viewers can see that. And what I did, I just took it off like that. So when this cook, corn is kind of sweet when it cooks off on a flat grill like that. Um, reason why I'm mixing it like this is I want to get the corn kind of coated so when it cooks up it's not popping all over the place and this is a, a, a mild pepper I'm going to use these for color and flavor and I'm not going to use the whole pepper I'm just going to use a half of this and a half of this one here but and that's what I'm going to use that for alright I'm going to de-seed it because some people just can't handle the heat. You know, I'm one of them. I like hot food, but ain't no sense in me burning my tongue up. I ain't as young as I used to be. All right. And as you can see, I de-seeded that. And what I did, I took my knife, pressed down on this end, and pushed it back that way. And that took all of that out of there. So you don't have to worry about dumping seeds out. Okay. And you don't necessarily have to use these type pepper. You can use a green, green bell pepper. But this is what I like for my flavor. And I hope that camera there can get a good shot of me chopping. And if you're not used to using a knife, don't don't do this. Always set your knife down and do that. All right. I'm used to a knife. I'm used to this knife. 14 years of having it. Uh, as you can see, I diced it fine because I didn't want it to be as big as the corn. So in the onion, so the flavor of it will come out when I put it on the grill and you'll taste it. 
All right, you can smell it. I know I can, man. Let me change these gloves because I don't want to set fire to everything I do. Then you can see that mixture. You can see the brightness of the color of it begin to mix in there. And I coated it too, so like that, like that uh, corn, I don't want it popping all over the place. All right. All right, put a, another pair of gloves on, and we're going to mix these bad boys together up, and we're going to melt a little margarine and put in there too. So when I put it on the grill, the, the color of it will be there. The preparation takes a long time, but it's well worth it. Some people say you can't rush good food, in which that is true. One egg. A little bit of milk. And as you can see, the consistency, you see how that corn, the flavor, the color of that corn came back out in the peppers? See how that's that's the consistency you want. So when you fry it, it'll fry up right on here. Okay. Now the next thing is the breading for the uh, catfish itself. I'm taking panko breading, like I mentioned earlier. I'm taking that salt, pepper, and guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take a little bit of this this hush puppy mix to it for the simple fact that it's got a, a cornmeal bread into it. And that cornmeal a, a coat to it just as well as that panko. So, black pepper. I like pepper. I like salt too, but those two guys there. And I'm gonna take just a little bit of this. To it. You may wonder why I waited to the last to make this because that breading doesn't take long. And that is about a cup. This is about three cups of panko, panko breading to one cup of that and maybe a teaspoon of uh, salt and pepper to it. And I'm just going to mix it together like that. And then when, I, when it comes to me breading my fish, you will see. Now, on the fish itself, I'm going to season the fish also with salt and pepper, but I'm going to take some olive oil so that oil will absorb into the fish it, itself too. Even though catfish is a fatty fish, it's not like a tilapia or something like that. Uh, it has its own fat to it. So I'm adding just a little bit of olive oil to it. Again, black pepper. You may say that's a lot of black pepper on there, but once you get to mixing it up and it gets spread it all over the place, then it evens out. And it's the same way with salt. And my rule of thumb is cover the top of it. And then once you mix it, the flavor all to come down together at one time. All right, now we got these guys doing what they do. Take these gloves off. And let's get some of this stuff start cooking. Because these guys take the longest. So I'm gonna put these guys over in this corner where my hot spot is. And then I'll toss them. Go. Sound good, doesn't it? Sound real good. I'm going to put a little bit of butter on here. I'm 
Now I feel like I'm at a hibachi grill. You can see how it breaded, the, the breading came together on this. Potatoes smell so good, that onion. If you ever had onion off a grill, I'm gonna have to roast y'all an onion off a grill, a whole one, and let you taste it and add flavor to it, a uh, seasoned butter one day. That kind of stuff. You see how that become, began to come out golden? And these guys. And I'm putting this butter on top of the core for the simple fact that once the heat starts coming up through the core, it's going to melt the butter and it's going to run down the ridges of it. All right. I hope our viewers can see this. Now to get a little coating where it won't be dry on there. So this is the start to grilling season for all those great grillers out there. There's a lot of them out there, uh, backyard grillers and professionals. So I'm doing a little something different so you can do southern fried food off a grill. All right. And here's your corn. So that holiday cookout, picnic food, this is one sample of what you could do off a of grill. All right. Thank you. Thank you for watching Healthy Cooking with Chef Jeff.